For my AP research project, I chose to study the effect of color on memorization in the process of bird identification. This study combines a vast range of memory research with the field of ornithology and, in turn, environmentalism. According to the Cornell Lab of Ornithology, one in four birds in the U.S. and Canada have disappeared since 1970. That is 2.9 billion breeding adult birds as of September 2019. This is a major environmental shift that shows signs of change in all biomes. This is important because birds are used as environmental indicators. Bioindicators are defined as biological processes, species, or communities that are used to assess the quality of the environment and how it changes over time. In order to gather and analyze indicator species data, various organizations form local and global bird counting events. One of the most popular of these avian efforts is the Great Backyard Bird Count. Anyone can participate in these citizen science projects, so people from around the world provide data for various places that can be compared and analyzed in order to evaluate the health of both the bird species and their ecosystems. For these studies to have accurate results, participants must be able to accurately identify birds. Learning to identify birds requires time, energy, and experience. Bird identification is dependent on memorization. When identifying a bird, location, season, time of day, behavior, and the bird's call are taken into account. And all of these attributes must be memorized for specific species in order to identify them in the field. There are a multitude of studies about bird behavior, some about choosing which birds are good indicator species through their eating habits and location, and even in-depth studies about identifying birds based solely off of their songs and calls. Bird identification resources, such as the Merlin Bird ID app from Cornell, take all of these aspects into account, but the ornithology world is lacking studies based solely on bird's color. Ken Kaufman, a writer of Field Guide to receive the Ludlow Griscom Award for Outstanding Contributions in Regional Ornithology in 1992, wrote in 2016 that birds come in all sorts of eye-catching hues, which makes them easier to spot in busy backdrops but color isn't always the best place to start when trying to identify a species. Bluebirds aren't always blue. Goldfinches aren't always gold. If we just focus on color, we may have to learn the same species over and over. The goal of this study is to determine whether color has a major impact on the memorization and identification of birds in order to evaluate the reliability of colorblind or color defective participants in avian-related citizen science projects. A study by Zulkifli and Mustafar reviewed multiple different studies involving color and memory and concluded that color has a positive effect on memory. In one study reviewed in this paper, Spence, Wong, Rusan, and Rostiger examined the ability to recognize colored and grayscale images of neutral scenes with 120 participants. In my study, some participants will be presented with color images of birds with their common names while another group we presented grayscale images of the same birds with their common names. As in the study by Aubrey Fear, which studied the effects of color preference on word list recall. Participants will be asked to write down the names that they recall on paper as the images appear again. When the, paper, when the images reappear, they will be in randomized order and without their common names. It is these common names that participants will be asked to recall on paper. The resulting data will be granted, gathered, and analyzed, making this a quantitative research project. In this study, the group shown the color images will be the control group, and the group shown the grayscale images will be the experimental group. This allows for the removal of the color variable and for the effect of this removal to be measured. Miller, in 1956, in his groundbreaking research on memory, amalgamates multiple different experiments that act as evidence towards the span of immediate memory being seven plus or minus two. He uses the analogy of a communication system to explain his reasoning. Information is put into the system and then output information or transmitted information results. 
quantifying the similarity between the input and output information, which should be similar to some extent, allows one to calculate the random fluctuations or noise introduced by the system during transmission. In terms of Miller's research, above seven of some unit of information input, the transmitted information that results becomes more and more dissimilar to the input information. This concept allows me to evaluate good and poor results in my study because there is only one variable, color. In every test conducted in the study by Spence et al., the color-color observations and the grayscale, grayscale observations had more consistent and successful results than any combination of color and grayscale images. So, so, so such mixed groups of color and grayscale are left out of my study. If my hypothesis is correct and color does not affect the ability of one to memorize and identify birds, then the possibility of the variable of colorblind participants affecting or corrupting the data of citizen science projects like the great backyard bird count is very small. If color is significant for memorization, then the chunking theory mentioned in the study by Aubrey Fear, in which seven letters can be remembered in seven words, it can be remembered in seven sentences, can be utilized so that the mental profile formed for each bird when studying ornithology can be put upon the color and variations can be added on in chunks according to the theory. It is the hope of this study to enhance the learning experience of birding that the local and global analysis of birds and their ecosystems may be accurate and the environment better understood and cared for. I hypothesize that lacking the ability to see color will not hinder one's ability to identify and recall birds because of the presence of field marks and shades. This study is a quantitative experimental study where a single variable, color, is manipulated and the results are analyzed. The 30 participants range from ages 16 to 18 and include 16 males and 14 females. Participants were randomly split into two groups, a control group of 18 participants, 10 males and 8 females, and an experimental group of 12 participants, 6 males and 6 females. The control group was presented with 11 full color images of different birds with their common names. The birds and images were chosen at random and the images were presented for 30 seconds. After the 11 images were shown, the participants were prompted to write while the images were presented again in a random order, the common name of the bird that is on the screen during the duration that it is present on the screen in the space on the paper next to the number corresponding to the order at which the birds appear in the presentation. During this time, they were also prompted to write down the reason or reasons that they remembered the common name, time permitting. The experimental group, after receiving a prompt identical to that of the control group, was presented with the same 11 images of the same birds that were presented to the control group for 30 seconds each with their common name, but in a different order than that of the control group, and the images were grayscale instead of full color. After the experimental group received the same prompt as the control group, to write while the images were presented again, the common names of the bird that is on the screen during the duration that it is present on the screen in the space on the paper next to the number corresponding to the order at which the birds appear in the presentation. And they were prompted to write down the reason or reasons that they recalled the birds' names, time permitting. When the presentation concluded, the participants of both groups were opened a Google form and recorded their responses in the spaces next to the corresponding numbers from their papers. This was done so that participants could complete the study personally and from anywhere at any time that they were available for about 15 minutes. Participants' responses were scored either zero points, a half point, or one point for each image in order to formulate individual scores. The average score of participants in the color control group was 8.8. .8. The average score of participants in the grayscale experimental group was 7.4. That means that there is a difference of only 1.4. Both groups' averages fell within Miller's 7 plus or minus 2 range. Therefore, the manipulation of the variable did not have a major effect. But the color responses averaged a higher score than the grayscale responses. This could mean that someone lacking the ability to see color might have a very slightly impaired ability to identify birds by their plumage. Within the control group, 88 out of the 180 written responses involved color as a reason for memorizing the bird, accounting for 49% of responses. As this is 1% less than half of responses, 
This may be indicative of color playing a much smaller role in memorization here than originally anticipated. Within the same group, 75 of those 88 color-related responses were completely to nearly completely correct, with the, with the exception of grammatical errors within the common names of birds, an 85% success rate. Within the grayscale experimental group, 29 of the 103 written responses involved color as a reason for memorizing the bird, accounting for 28% of responses. Of the 29 color-related responses in the grayscale group, 22 were completely to nearly completely correct, a 76% success rate. There is a 21% difference between the inclusion of color in responses and of the control group and experimental groups. This means that color is 21% more responsible for responses in the control group than in the experimental group. This information is not helpful though in order to come to a conclusion on the effects of color on memorization. This the success rates of color-related responses determine the difference in performance of participants. The control group was only 9% more successful than the experimental group due to the presence of color. Next, the optional responses of each group were evaluated for the presence of field marks. These field marks include tufts, eye rings, distinct, ring, distinct rings of color around the eyes of certain birds, dark or shaded body parts or sections, shape, size, and structure of the birds presented. 62% of the 103 original responses written by, optional responses written by the experimental group are referenced, references to field marks. Only 45% of the field marks mentioned by the experimental participants referenced color. 47% of reference field marks did not involve color. This adds up to 92%, implying that 8% or two responses went missing possibly due to human error during analysis. 111 of the 180 written responses in the control group referred to field marks for memorization, also 62%. 92% of these field marks that the control group referred to are dependent on color. Only 8.3% of the field marks referenced by the control group were color independent. The difference between the performance of the group that had the color, full range of color available and that of the group that was unable to see colors were extremely similar, with a difference of only 1.1 in average scores. The experimental group was almost equally reliant on black, white, and shades of gray, 45%, as it was by other field marks, 47%, which indicates that the patterns of shapes and field marks are sufficient to allow people who do not have the ability to see color to identify and recall birds with this about the same accuracy as a person who could see color. This evidence towards the original hypothesis this is evidence toward the original hypothesis being true. Many people across the globe who are colorblind or color defective would be able to participate in citizen science projects such as the GBBC with little to no impediments to their ability to recall and identify bird species with accuracy. Thank you.